Hello crafty friends, this is the Papered Chef here. In today's Canvas Workspace tutorial, you are going to learn how to personalize your scan and cut machine. We will work with fonts. I will show you how to weld the letters. I will show you how to transfer the cutting file to your machine and how to retrieve that data or retrieve the cutting file. Then we will cut it out using vinyl. I have some really fun holographic colorful vinyl to show you. I will then teach you how to transfer the vinyl onto the machine and apply it. So you can follow along with whichever model of scan and cut you have and personalize your machine. Right now I'm going to show you what version of Canvas Workspace that I'm using so that you can make sure that you're using the same version for this and subsequent tutorials. I'm going to go to the help menu. I'm going to about Canvas Workspace and I'm using version 2.3.1. I just wanted to mention again that I'm using Canvas Workspace for the PC. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can access the fonts that which are installed on my computer. If your version does not look like this, you're probably using the browser-based version or the web-based version of Canvas Workspace, which is fine and it's a great version. It just doesn't allow you to access the fonts on your computer. Therefore, please use the link in the description below to download and install the version I'm using. I've zoomed in to 50% so you can see this. I'm going to click on the text tool and I'm going to select the lobster font. It's, it's going to be on your drop down menu under L if you have a PC. I'm not sure if this font is in the Mac computers, but you should be able to find something that you like to use for this project. So because I've recently used it, the lobster font appeared on the top. If not, I would scroll down and find it under the L's. So you can select your font from the top menu bar here or from the Properties panel over here. I'm going to go ahead and type the word Cindy, the name. And notice how the C is not very big, so I want to actually erase the C. I'll make it bigger separately. I just wanted to show you that, though, because it's, it's not, even though I used the Shift key when I typed the C, it's not very big. And when I don't use the shift key, it's even smaller. I just don't think that's in proportion with the rest of the letters, but I'm going to just go ahead and erase the C. So now what I want to do is go, I'm going to select this text just with my mouse. And you see how there's little, there's little squares around it. It means it's selected, this block of text. And I'm going to go up to edit, process overlap, and weld. Now what that did is instead of having little lines between the, the letters, it fused them all into one. Okay. I always have, it just seems to me, and I mean, of course, every computer is temperamental and every, so it seems to me like it's better to weld them together before I enlarge it to show you that. But I'm going to show you, we'll just show you what they look like without being welded together. There you go. It's harder to work with individual letters when they're not welded together. It's harder to, to work with them as far as applying them with vinyl later. All right, so before, again, you can resize your text all you want, but it's better when you first type your text to do the welding. That's in my opinion. Now let's, let's, erase, let's erase this word, and I'm going to just work with the top word. I want to still add the letter C, but I'm going to type just the C, and then I'm going to enlarge it to be the size I want it. So that is, that is the capital C I want. I don't want it to be that large. It's just doing it for effect. So I'm going to move this in D down. I'm going to, I'm going to slightly overlap them so I can weld this, the rest of this word together with the C. Now what you don't want to do, I'm going to make the C smaller, but I just, I'm showing this to, 
to teach you something. What you don't want to do is make this overlap to the point of going across the letter I. Because if you do that, you're going to have too many separate shapes. They're going to be, it's going to probably give you an error message. So you only want the C slightly overlapping the rest of the word when you do your welding. All right, something like that. Now I'm going to make the C smaller, and then we will weld that to the rest of the word. I like it about like that. For, through my experimentation, I think that looked good. So I'm going to select the C, which is already selected, and the rest of the word. It's easier to select them both by just dragging a rectangle around them both. I'm going to go up to Edit, Process Overlap, and Weld. Notice how they're all fused together. And I only have to work with one piece of vinyl and then that little I, I mean, just the dot on the I, that's it. That's all I have to work with. So it's going to be very easy to apply this to a machine, but it's still too big. I don't need it that big. So let's go over here. I'm in the panels and I'm clicking on the edit. Now I could have just done it by, I could have resized this by eyeballing it and using my mouse. I could have resized it just by dragging on the corner. However, that would be hard for you to follow along if, for your machine. So I think it's just better to, to use the edit menu, or the I should say the edit panel, because then you know precisely what size I used in case you want to use that same style and size font on your machine. So let's make it two and a half inches. So in the height, so over on the right, where it says maintain aspect ratio, keep that checked off so that the height and the width stay in proportion. And we're going to make it two and a half inches high. 2.5. Now, when I wrote the whole papered chef, when I wrote that out on my other two machines, I, I couldn't make it that high because the word was, there were two words and it was too many letters. So it just depends on how many letters you're going to be working with. So two and a half is a good height for this word and it'll fit on the machine. And now it's, now you're going to put it where you want to cut it. Okay. So, I can put it on the top left, it's fine, because her machine seems to be cutting nice on all parts of the machine, on all parts of the mat. I'm just putting it over on the top left part of the mat, and then we're going to save it. That looks good. Now the red, the red line is, is just the part that it's it's only going to let you work within the red line on the machine, but on, I mean, on this canvas workspace, but when you get to the machine, you actually have a little bit more leeway for cutting. So let's do this. Let's save it first to our machine. I mean, to our, to my computer. Let's say, correction, let's save the word Cindy to my computer, which I'm going to do. File, save as. I'm saving this file inside of my documents canvas workspace. You don't need to save it to your computer first because we could just save it to the USB drive and that is all. However, I like to keep, as a best practice, I like to keep files on both my PC and my external USB drive or hard drive as a backup. And when I don't do that, I usually end up losing, losing my files. So let's just click on save. And it's asking me if I want to replace this, but the first time you save, it will not ask you that. So now that it's saved on my computer, again, it was not necessary. I could have saved it straight to the USB drive. We're going to now, we're going to now export it, export the file. So this is, this is what's called a cutting file. It's going to cut along the black lines. Okay, so we're going to go file. And we're going to say export. We're going to go to export FCM file. And now it's the same process as when I saved the file before. But instead of my documents canvas workspace, I'm going to go to my USB drive, which is down the bottom. And again, I'm going to keep the same name, Cindy. Name it whatever you want. And we're going to click on save. Now that the file is saved to the USB drive, 
I will see you in the next section of this tutorial where we, we will retrieve the file from our machine and cut it out using vinyl. Thank you. In this section of the tutorial, you will learn how to retrieve the data from the USB stick that we saved it to from inside of Canvas Workspace. You will learn how to cut that file out using some really neat holographic vinyl. We will transfer it to transfer tape and onto the machine to personalize your scan and cut. So let's get started. Now we're going to, this, this USB stick, USB stick, it's called thumb drive. Okay, it's, mine is in this position. So it's very easy, very portable. What I like about USB sticks is that they save, they hold a lot of cutting files. This one's 32 gigabytes. I mean, loads and loads of cutting files can be stored on this. And all I need to do is I'm facing it toward me. Okay, you see that? I'm facing the text toward me and I'm putting it into the USB slot. Very, very easy. And as opposed to when you just transfer files wirelessly, which is very easy as well, you can only transfer one at a time, then retrieve the file. So this saves you a lot of steps if you have a lot of files to just put them on a USB stick. So there you go. Now, I wanna show you how to retrieve that file. You're going to go into your home screen. It says pattern and scan. You're gonna click on pattern. And you're going to click on save data. And the three places that you can retrieve data from are the machine, the USB stick or the USB cable toward to the computer. Select the second option. And this is the only file saved on there. So you're gonna click on that one. We have the Cindy file, click okay. And if you want to, you can do things with it while you have it. You could click on the editing mode and you could resize it, for example, if you want. You could mirror it if you have to do an iron on or a special kind of, if for any reason, like we're gonna be cutting vinyl side up. This is a piece of vinyl. We're cutting vinyl side up. What you see is what you get. It, however, if you're cutting vinyl side down or iron on side down, then, then you would have to mirror mirror your image. Okay, So you can do things in here. Resize, mirror, duplicate, all kinds of things you can do. But we just need to cut. That's all we need to do. So the settings for cutting vinyl for this particular type of vinyl, and I'll show you the vinyl in a minute, is I just used the speed of two. I went into my settings here with the wrench. Cut speed of two. I left all the others at their default. Their default is when there's a black square around them. Leave all your settings at the default. I used the cut speed of two because I like to slow down my speed. And I like to use a blade depth of two for this particular type of vinyl because it's a little thicker than other types of vinyl I used. So that's, I'm using a blade depth of two. A little bit stronger vinyl. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna move this out of the way and just show you. Now let's talk about the vinyl I'm using for this project. I'm going to turn it over and show you the front of the box. Okay, it's called holographic PVC multicolor self-adhesive vinyl. They have other kinds of vinyl at this website, but I tend to use self-adhesive vinyl for my projects, whether I'm decorating coffee mugs, boxes, uh, and in this case, that's the scan and cut. But there are other kinds of vinyl, and, and other kinds of vinyl that they do have are like heat transfer vinyl and things like that but I prefer the self-adhesive vinyl. And I also prefer when vinyl is in 12 by 12 sheets, so I was very happy to find this. These 12 by 12 sheets don't, are very easy to work with. They don't curl up like the rolls that you get from a lot of craft stores. And there's a little grid on the back to cut them. Okay, so there's many colors of this, and the colors are listed on the back of the box, and I've already mixed up the box. And it looks like they're, I think this box came with one or two of each sheet, but I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, probably either two of each sheet or one sheet and one that's slightly different. Okay, these are just fantastic. And when you have a holographic shine like that, it kind of it kind of matches more projects because it takes on the color of what it's what it's on. So I really think that's fantastic. And I've been using this sheet here, which I would call sort of you know blue or jade. And we're going to go ahead and cut a piece of that. So what I'm going to do, oh, and here's the, here's the back. So we could see, by the way, all the different colors listed, all the different holo holograms. So there will be a link to their YouTube channel for art techniques and a link to 
the coupon for 10% off and this product itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece. I'm using my paper trimmer and I'm just gonna cut a piece three inches. See that? Okay, because you're only cutting what you need. And I just think that would look really nice on the scan and cut machine. It's gonna be really bright. And because this is for my sister's machine, I'm giving her sort of an earthy tone. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your scan and cut cutting mat and you're going to attach the vinyl to the cutting mat. So cut, you can use a brayer, something like that to roll it on, but I'm just gonna use my fingers. And we're gonna go ahead and load the mat. I can use my fingers to rub a little bit longer, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn out that light. I was just keeping the light on to show you that holographic vinyl. So let's show you, we're gonna load this. And again, I'm just giving it, as it's gonna be cutting, I'm giving it a little rub because I didn't, I could use painter's tape. It's, it's pretty, my mat's pretty sticky, see? I just restuck it recently, but this stuff is, it's not as easy to stick this to the mat as it is to stick paper to the mat. So you could use a piece of painter's tape to help hold it on if you wanted to. And I'll just show you how that would look. Of course, you're not gonna cover up any of the parts where you're gonna have vinyl. You can use a little painter's tape like that. Or while it's cutting, you can just give it a little rub and make sure that it's good while it's cutting. Now, I'm gonna use a blade depth of two. I, I'm using a speed of two on here, on my settings. I'm using a speed of two. Real quick again, because it's been a minute. All right, there, speed of two cutting depth or cutting blade of two. However, if you're using an SDX machine, at this point, all you need to do is change your, your setting to half cut. I don't have that option on, an, on a CM model. So I have to change my blade depth. Just use auto blade and half cut. And you might not even need half cut. I don't know, I haven't tried this with the SDX yet. But I'm just saying, you don't need to mess with any of your settings when you're cutting vinyl on the SDX. Most of the time it just figures it out automatically for you. So let's do this, let's just click Okay, okay, and we're gonna cut it. So the vinyl's attached. I've loaded the mat with this button here. I've attached the vinyl to the mat. There, I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna hit start. My blade depth is two. No other settings needed to be changed. I'm giving my mat a little bit of a rub so it doesn't slip because vinyl is sort of plastic and it doesn't hold, doesn't grip onto the mat as easy as paper grips onto the mat. Okay, it's taking less than a minute to cut. Let's click OK, unload the mat. Look at that, the word Cindy. Remember this was the lobster font, very thick font. And now I will show you how to apply that. And I'm also gonna save my, my extra pieces a little bit, you know, if I want to. Like, let's just cut, we can cut there, and then we'll be save all this extra vinyl. And you know what else I'm gonna do? This is just because I'm in the middle of making some little splashes with my, I have this punch, and it's make, I can make little water splashes, so I think this will make nice water. So I'm just gonna cut off the piece I don't need, just to salvage it. And if you're gonna do any punching, like if you're gonna put this through an actual punch, you need to have a little bit of a backing on it. So I'm saving that. So here I have this piece. And I, what I want to do is just take off the part I don't want. And then I also save that. I tend to save the little extras just for cleaning up the lint on my table. So that's what I'll do. I'll peel away the part I don't want. See? And then I can weed out the part in the middle. Like that. Okay? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to clean up any dust on my table with before I throw it away, because I always have lots of glitter and things. Okay, so that I just, I'm not saying I'm going to save it, I'm going to throw it right away, but I'm saying right now, I'm saving it for now. So now you can weed it with a, I can just use like, the, for. you can use weeding tools, which I didn't travel with, so I'm going to use the end of my scissors, but of course you would use weeding tools. Now it don't matter if you cut that part, because I, as long as you don't cut into the the letter itself. You can cut into the part you're weeding out. So what I'm doing is I'm just poking in there. I'm just weeding out the middle parts, like the inside of this letter D and the inside of the letter Y. Trying not to cut, of course, into the letters. OK, 
Okay, so <laughs> look, the little drop went, it looks like a raindrop. It's kind of cool, it went flying over here on my machine. See, how cute. All right, so let's put that over there. Now we have this, we have this left, so now we need what's called transfer tape. So we're going to use transfer tape. Now, just, it's, a little, it's just a little grid paper, and mine's been used many times. You can reuse it over and over. Transfer tape is sticky, but not as sticky as vinyl. So you're just going to line it up on there. See, it has a grid pattern. And you put it on top of your vinyl. Okay? So there's the transfer tape. Now what I need to do is use my spatula to get the Cindy to stick to the transfer tape and get rid of the vinyl. Now, like I said, we did a kiss cut. We only cut through the top part. We need to get this part off. So to do that, you just sort of use your, you're, you're creating some friction. You're creating some heat with your spatula. And I'm just using a Pampered Chef, it's by Pampered Chef, a spatula, a cooking spatula. And I think I have it. We're gonna try it. So when you start to peel it off, you're gonna say, and see if it gets, yeah, there we go. See, it, it did a nice job. That's why I really like working with vinyl. And I really like when it's not on a, like I said, when it's not on a sheet, a roll, I mean. I like this 12 by 12 vinyl. And aside from my coupon, they may even have an, you know, a better sale on it than, than my coupon. So definitely check that out. So here I'm gonna now, I'm gonna show you how to apply it. And of course you don't have to get holographic vinyl like that's so cool like this. You can get you know, solid colors because they have solid colors too. I'm going to put it like that and center it under the scan and cut. Let's make sure I'm in focus here. And I think I am. I'm going to apply it. I'm going to put it right under the scan and cut. Tilt that a little bit. There are, there are grid lines too to use. I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to give it a rub. It's real important to get the eye because that's separate. And the rest of it, if you get part of the word, it usually helps the rest of the word stick. Looks like there's a little bit of fuzz that got under that one. There we go. Let's see if that works. And you just test it. You peel off a little and see if it, yep, it works good. And once it works good, you can still give it a rub if you want, but you're good to go. You can peel this off now. And then I tend to use, use my fingers after that. See, there's a little piece of dust. Oh, good, I'm glad it came off with the transfer tape. See that piece of dust? I, wasn't, I was trying not to rub hard because sometimes if it, if it was in the wrong spot, yay! I'm really happy you can, if there are any more bubbles or anything, you can get them off there, that way. And voila. We'll put that, you can see me on the reflection. See that, just the light alone made that turn green. When the light was off, it was blue. It's a hologram, so you know as you turn it, as you change the angle, it changes color. You see, it's yellow, it's blue, it's green. It's really, really fun. But you can use whatever you want to, to personalize your machine. And I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on how to use Canvas Workspace to cut out, to create and customize your Brother Scan and Cut using vinyl. And lastly, I would like to end with, when I was experimenting with the vinyl, I also did one of these. I decorated a mini pizza box using vinyl and it was super easy to apply to go to put some gifts in there. This little box. Okay, same exact concept, same exact settings. This one was just an inch and a half high instead of, I think this one was, what did we say? 2.75. Let's make sure when I look in my set. Two and a half inches high. So this one was one and a half or 1.75 and this one was like slightly larger at 2.75. So please let me know if you have any questions and please check out the description of this video for more information. That's all for now. This is The Papered Chef.